Ed Big Head here. I'm with Keegan Thompson and Bobby Freeman, the keyboardist and organist for the Diamondbacks, and uh, we're going to ask him some questions today. Uh, first question. Okay. So I have read in the previous interview that obviously you've been here for 20 years, but you want to do another 20 years. Tell me about the key to your longevity. First, the first 20 years, and then the next. How's that? How's that going to work? Well, I. First of all, I don't have a job. I don't work take me out to the ball game. I play it. And when you absolutely love what you do or your occupation, there's no Monday mornings. There's no looking for when am I on vacation, when's our day off. I love what I do from start to finish. From the time I get to the ballpark to meeting with the fans before the game, during the game, and then actually playing music during the game, I absolutely love what I do, and it's easy to be here, and I want to be here. And you feel like you're a part of the game that's happening on the field. I'm part of the game, but in a really fun way, because I'm not the game. I'm behind the scenes, and I am i can't create wins, but I can help create sustainability. So, for instance, if the team's having a good inning and a rally, then what we do, I just try to just sustain that enthusiasm. So it makes it easy for me. I kind of just follow the players. And I never want to show up the team. And I never want to uh, do anything to uh, maybe uh, show up the visiting team as well. We want our visiting team to feel welcome here at Chase Field. And we want nice, fair, friendly competition. Uh, it's strange that you ask that because Keegan has a question regarding that. So you, that. you lead me into my next question here. Um, we just played the Braves in Atlanta a while ago, and Matthew Kaminsky is their organist. Yes. And when Jake Lamb would come up to play, he would play Mary Had a Little Lamb. Patel Marte would have his at bat, and he was playing uh, I'm a Little Teapot. What, I mean, what's your take on that? What do you think about Do you consider that showing up the opposing team? I won't say it's showing up, but. Uh, when I did, let's say, when I was with the Phoenix Firebirds, it was the AAA Man, I, I, I minor used to league. Go to those games. Yes, with the Giants organization, we did all kinds of things like that. The circus music on an air and things like that. And me personally, and I think with our organization, again, we welcome in our uh, opposing team, and we just kind of but uh, low key, and I don't want to play, I would never want to play something that would incite somebody on another team to go like, what is that dude doing? I'm going to go up there and get this ball 600 feet. <laughs> so that's my feeling, I guess. Okay. So, so what, do you, what do you think about what he does? Do you have, um, does it bother you what he does? Do you think it's funny? How do you feel about it? Well, I, I guess it's funny, it's entertaining, and obviously that every team has their their uh, game operations department and their field for their fans in their like location. So I'm originally from Cleveland. So maybe what is done in Cleveland during fan entertainment works differently than what it would work for in Arizona. So I think in Arizona it's a more conservative and it's worked for us for obviously over 20 years. So before you started with the Diamondbacks, you played the keyboard for the San Diego Padres. How long was that and what was it like? Well, it was during the, the uh, years when the Padres actually went to the World Series uh, in 97, 98, and so I was a guest organist. I was playing back and forth, uh, uh, helping out in San Diego so they could find a full-time organist. Uh, the Diamondbacks were kind enough to let me be uh, borrowed out for a while. You were a pinch keyboardist. Right? I was, yeah, I was coming out of the bullpen <laughs> to help out. Yes, yes. very nice, very nice. Um, what type of production goes into your job. Do you have freedom to play as you choose, when you choose, or do you have a producer that's telling you what to play? Well, we do both. With the Arizona Diamondbacks, they have total trust with me, but we also have our, our game plan sheet. So this is, for instance, this is just the pregame. So, and I help support these elements with the organ in the background. And sometimes we have what we call sound on tape. So I'm listening on a headset, and then that way I have to like be quiet. So let me show you one more thing. So for instance, when we have a half inning break, I play the third out, and then on this particular half inning break, which is our mid-first, I will play under the marketing read, and then we'll run the uh, the chorus light spot, which has sound on tape. So then I need to, to bail out. So we want to keep the show entertaining, professional, and no quiet time. 
so we work together. So we are a concert team from the time that we do the welcome all the way till we play D-Back Swing, which means that D-Back's one. And, so, and then we do our post-game reads as well, then I play under those. Who else do you meet with to come up with that production, that, that schedule that you have there? The entire game operations staff, including our mascot. So I would say probably 20 members. That's interesting. Okay. Yes, so we have audio, we have visual, the BBTV crew, we have the rally backs crew, we have myself, everybody is on the same page. We always say it's better to over communicate. So we communicate from the time we walk through the gates until the uh, victory, until we have won the game. So tell us something that normal fans may not know about your daily day, uh, day to day gig here. I guess getting up in the morning, doing my little physical workout, whether it be treadmill or walk the dogs or whatever that is, ride the bike, and that way you get mentally ready to go, eating properly, uh, making sure you're early, not just on time or ever late. And that way it keeps the stress out of the job because I don't have a job, as I said before, I have a, a, a fun life and I want to keep it that way. And I always want to make sure there's time for anybody if they have a need. They have a request from me, they need me to do something for them. And it's important that I'm up here in the Sandlot area early to greet fans that are waiting for me that either want an autograph or just say hello, give me a high five, or just stand here and talk to me and watch me play. So you, you have to open mind and be ready to intermingle with the fans and make sure that you make their day a good one. Because we can't control if we win or lose the game, but I can control that. I hear parents talk and kids talk as they walk away and say, that was really cool, I got to meet the Oregon guy and he was really nice. Because fans will come back to the point of pleasure. So out of my own curiosity, have you ever called in sick? I actually didn't call in sick, but I had unfortunately a rotator cuff surgery, and I would tell people that if you hang around the players long enough, you're gonna catch what some of them <laughs> did. So we joked around. So I waited till the end of the season in 2011, had the rotator cuff surgery, and then probably from moving the equipment around in the old days when I used to actually move the 400 pound organs. And so what happened is I had the surgery, everything was good, and then the following year, 2012, unfortunately, the surgery let go, which I found out was kind of common. So I had to have the surgery redone. So with that said, I was on, a, I came in, recorded everything on a replay box, and then once I was able to come to the ballpark after a few weeks, then I actually played my songs on the little computer. So if there was a foul ball, I would hit the, the computer button and play charge. So it's ready to go for you. Yeah, I sit there and just drink coffee. <laughs> so yeah, I was out for the last half of 2012. Other than that, I've been here. I'm always here. Wow. And spring training games. Well. Oh, by the way, yeah, the only organist, not bragging, but I'm the only <laughs> organist that plays all the spring training games because we train. We spring train locally, obviously, in Scottsdale. So I play all the games out of Salt River Fields. And what's really unique and different at Salt River Fields is that we're getting fans from all over the world. I mean, I've signed autographs and taken selfies with folks from basically other countries, let alone other cities. So it gives our brand a uh, a unique aspect when they walk by and again I'm right on the concourse behind my place so they have to come up and talk with me and take selfies and, and it's uh, something that they remember and they, they're taking our brand back home and if they just say hey I know this guy they throw it on Facebook whatever that's our goal and it spreads the brand internationally for the team yes you know, right? it, it helps I believe that it helps and, it, and it's always a positive image for our brand Absolutely, and we're running out of time here, so we're going to finish this up with uh, one final question. You, do you play events and gigs outside of Chase Field? I do. The Diamondbacks, and how can people, how can people get a hold of you? Well, I'm the only full-time front office organist in any major league sport. The reason for that, not that I'm the best organist, but I help support community affairs uh, events uh, throughout the whole state of Arizona. I help support our corporate partners. So we go, go, go. Even Christmas morning, I go down to see this. Nice. Yeah, I had, again, not bragging, but that's what we do. That's uh, our mission is to be out giving back to the community. So to reach me, it's uh, bfreeman at dbacks.com and uh, a community event, something like that. If there's something we can help you out with, I will definitely need uh, All of us here at the Diamondbacks are here to support the community anywhere in the state of Arizona. Thank you very much for sitting down with us. My I'm Ed Bighead, Keegan so Thompson, Pleasure. Bobby Freeman, yeah. <laughs> azsnakepit.com.